and Alliance Girls High School. And should I say the Alliance High School and Alliance Girls High School. <laughs> Formerly African Girls High School. <laughs> are both great schools. And I will speak a little bit about, about Alliance uh, High School and Vicky will talk a little bit about the Alliance Girls High School. Now, I think it's a well-known story that way back in 1926, Bishop Arthur and the alliance of the Christian churches that later on became the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, the Anglican Church of Kenya, the Methodist Church of Kenya, and the African Inland Church, AIC, came together and decided that it was about time that African boys were able to attend high school. Because in those days, African boys and girls, for that matter, the few girls who at the time um, were allowed by their parents to go to school, could only get to primary school. One famous, future famous leader, then uh, Johnstone, Kamau Gengi, actually was a bright student and attended Musa Getau Primary School, after which he hit the glass ceiling because there was no high school for the future Jomo Kenyatta to attend. And so a few years later, when he heard about the opportunity for young boys who've completed primary school to be able to attend high school, he rushed his own brother, James Moigai, who became the first student of the Alliance High School, student number one. We called him AHS-1 until the day he died. And a few years later, so the story goes that it took a while to convince girls to go to school, African girls to go to school. The 20s, I, I, I protest. The 20s came and went. <laughs> the 30s came and went. I protest. There's been a myth about people like Carrie Francis having been anti-girls. But the 20s came and went. The 30s came and went. Still no girls. Vicky can take it up from there. <laughs> and that is why at Independence, three quarters of the cabinet comprised old boys of the Alliance High School. Fact. And the mayor of Nairobi <laughs> was an old girl. Fact. <laughs> but suffice to say that through the years, both schools, the girls and the boys schools, all the way to today, the faces that I see here this evening have produced excellent citizens of this country people who have contributed in every sphere of society, right from the metaros whom we just had in the arts, to all the various sciences, which are, Vicky, are an important part of life, engineers, doctors, architects, to lawyers, teachers. We've had great, great products of the alliances. And the danger is that when now some of us were in school, and there's a few older, old boys and girls here, some of us wondering whether we're endangered species. When we were in high school in the 80s and the early 90s, and those of you who were in school in the 70s and 60s, national schools, there were, there were 18 national schools, both girls and boys. And these national schools were properly resourced and funded. And those of you who recall the great traditions of schools, I will not mention other than the alliances, many have dropped off over the years. Funding for schools has come under tremendous pressure because as the population has grown, political imperatives have necessitated thousands more schools to come up and to share the same pie. And therefore, 
Schools like Alliance High School and Alliance Girls High School need the support of their alumni if they are to retain the great traditions that see you here seated today, having gone through the lives you've gone through. Today, there are 1,600 kids at Alliance High School. And if someone could tell me the Alliance Girls High School population. It's, yeah, it's about the same. It's about the same. Yeah. So you're talking about 3,200. When I was in school in the 80s, many of us were 600. Both schools were about 600 students. So running a school of 1,600 boys or 1,600 girls in an era where public funding has dwindled is quite a challenge. And I know many of us have supported young boys and girls through paying their school fees, and we should continue to do that. However, we may keep paying school fees for needy kids to attend Alliance, but if we don't find ways of making sure that the laboratories, the halls, the theaters, music centers, the resource centers, libraries, keep up with the times, and the times there are changing very quickly, there will be no schools, no alliances in the next 10 to 15 years. And this is why the idea of an endowment fund was mooted. Now, the Alliance High School uh, Endowment Fund was conceived several years ago and was dormant for a while until we had a conversation with Kehara, Kehara Minor here, a few years ago, and Ambassador Bethel Kiplagat and decided we should revive it properly get it properly constituted, and we set up an endowment trust fund fully approved by the AGM of the Old Boys Club, sponsored by the Old Boys Club, but independent of the Old Boys, with six trustees. And for the sake of pe people knowing who takes care of their money, the trustees in the case of the Alliance High School Endowment Trust Fund are Ambassador Bethel Kiplagat as chair, Donald Kanyaru, uh, uh, Sambili, Edward Sambili, Dr. Edward Sambili, Sam Oguda, Kehara Maina, and Martin Mbaya, representing several generations, right from the 50s into the 60s, into the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s, on that trust fund. They are charged with taking care of the funds that go in, making sure they're properly invested, and adhering to the trust did in how that money is deployed. And the idea is to build, first of all, the capital before really beginning to deploy the money in future years, a target of six billion shillings by the year 2025. Yes, because if we want to maintain the alliance that will exist in 2030, that will produce boys, and in the case of the Trust Fund for Girls, which you shall speak to about as well, that will produce girls who will compete with their peers in the 2030s and 40s, you will need a school that will have facilities that the times will demand. And that is why the idea of the Trust Fund has been mooted. And again, we were talking with Vicky, and she considered to me, that the boys always blaze the trail, but we like to make sure that we carry our girls along. I was just massaging his <laughs> ego so that he can... But the boys fund has its own account, it's fully registered, so the money goes directly to the trust fund. But we have agreed to host in our account any monies coming in for the girls trust fund while they register their trust fund and eventually, hopefully before the end of this year, open an account that is fully managed by the trust fund that the girls will have launched. Thank you very much. You see, Vicky, there's appreciation here. All jokes aside, we're very serious about how important this is. And we will do everything to support the setting up of that trust fund. And tonight's event, other than the networking, catching up, rekindling memories of floating and sinking, <laughs> rekindling those charity movies, 
And there are many stories about those. I'm sure we shall hear many stories about the charity movies, both at the cross and at our school. The proceeds from this evening will be shared equally. The net proceeds, that is, equally between the two endowment funds. And we hope to have many more events like this in the future, where collaboratively we will build that fund, those two funds, for those two schools. And that's why we're here today. And that's what we mean when we say that we have an endowment fund that we'd like to build. And